Come on, let's Vogue. Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. I think it's going to be an exciting one. Definitely outside the picture box. This one is all about taking a good photo. How many times have you seen a picture of yourself and you thought, oi, what was I thinking? I look like a brick. I'm not smiling right. My head's tipped in a weird way. My face looks fat. My body looks fat. My sister Sue is way cuter than me. I want you to be able to take photos in confidence, knowing your angles, knowing a way to pose, knowing how to flatter your body type, and to feel good and relaxed about it. Now, I'm gonna tell you, it is a process. It's sort of like anchoring a newscast. To look at a camera, read a teleprompter, and make it seem like you're talking to somebody one-on-one -on -one doesn't happen overnight. And the same thing goes for taking a good picture. It's a study. It's a study of how you carry yourself. It's a study of knowing your best angles. And so with a little bit of practice and know-how, and I do mean just a little bit, you will be able to feel confident in photographs and to be able to look at the finished result and say, Bam, I'm looking good there. There are some very, very simple basic rules to follow. And so as I talk about these things, I will also walk you through it so you can see the different body positioning and how just some subtle little tweaks can make all the difference in the world here. But we've got holiday parties coming up. We've got family gatherings during Christmas. And I know you're gonna be taking a lot of pictures. So I wanna make sure that you end up this season happy with those photographs and it's an album Album that you're joyful to share and not trying to cut yourself out. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about the most important thing when it comes to taking a picture, and that is posture and how you hold yourself. Core is key, remember that. Keeping your body straight, using your abs, lengthening your spine, shoulders back, chin always forward and down. That way you don't get the double chin and you don't look like you're looking up toward the sky. So point your chin down there's a perfect angle to make this happen and when you hit it it's the most flattering shot but your body and your posture must be tall it must be erect and it will make you automatically look five pounds leaner just by doing that when you when you relax too much and you slump in the shoulders round over the folds start to happen things don't look so pretty but there's a big difference when you do this versus when you're like this and I'm sure you can tell right away so Erect, straight, long and linear, face up, and then tip down. So just think, up and then down, and have your chin pointed just so. The next thing to think about is creating holes. If you are, if you're like this, you're you're a block with your arms and your legs together. You look like one big human block. And what makes people look good, what makes photographs look interesting is creating holes because it allows now your shape to come through. So simple, lift your arms, move them out to the side, separate your legs, move them away from your body a little bit, create space, create areas where light can come through and and then suddenly you have a waistline and suddenly you have hips and suddenly you have curves and you've taken on the human form as opposed to something man-made. So separate and start playing with holes and, and blank spots around the body to create some interesting angles and also to make you look your best as well. Uh, the next thing is standing straight on doesn't always work for everybody. Sometimes the most flattering look is a 45 degree pivot. Now, Here's where you need to be careful. If you are large chested and you pivot too much to the side, then all you see is chest. So the key is doing that 45 degree pivot and then swinging the arms back. So that way you've got that right angle, that little bit of twist really cuts into the waistline flatters that, bringing the shoulders back, squares you off. Um, and again, it's just a very, very nice look. With the legs here, you can rest back on one heel, uh, leave one forward, or you can separate the legs a little bit depending on the nature of the photograph, who you're standing with, how formal or casual it is. But that 45 degree pivot is a biggie. Um, 
and angles when sitting because we're not always photographed standing up. So when we sit, we have to think about creating that space as well. So we don't want to sit straight on because again, we're just going to look frumpy and big. So it's about now creating that angle, sitting to the side. How are you going to position your legs? Make sure you separate them so you don't see a block of leg, but you see legs. You can cross your legs. Again, twist your body around to create that little bit of separation. Move your hand away from your body. Again, just keep thinking holes and angles and play around. The key is just to take a lot of different pictures of yourself or have somebody help you out with this. Photograph you as you practice all of your different movements to see what angle best suits you and how you can create those holes and what it feels like because it's a matter of doing it over and over, understanding what that feel is, and then when it's time to take a picture, you just sit there and you recreate that feel. Uh, next is if you want to create curves, you know, some women are very, very straight and have a boyish figure and an easy way to create a curve is to really sit back on one hip and that suddenly puts the va va voom in the body. So if you're looking to create angles, sit back on one leg, one hip, really kick that out, and then suddenly you've given yourself the illusion of having more curves than you really do. Uh, the next one, and this is a biggie for me, it's, it's so overused and overdone, but it's that staged pose. And everybody hits it because it's flattering to the body, but the problem is, is that it looks like a staged pose. And that is that 45 degree pivot with the hand on the hip. And you see that a lot in society pictures. And I just, I find Find it to be too contrived and I think there are better ways of going about creating that nice lean angular look without looking so staged and so posed and the hand on the hip is just a very staged posed look. So you can use things like a purse holding onto a purse and then suddenly the way you carry that clutch can create that angle with the arm or even just resting your arm a little bit on the outside of the hip so your arm is straight but you do see separation from the waistline to the arm down on the hip. But I I just prefer a more relaxed pose, especially if you're at a formal event or a wedding type setting. Try to avoid the hand on the hip and knee bent and it's, it's just overdone. And so I'm trying to help get you into a new zone of being creative but still flattering your body. So now we've, we've addressed the body and how it photographs. Let's talk about the face. Again, as I mentioned at the top, having the chin down is key. Also, knowing your face shape, because if you have a wide face and your face is up and you give a big smile, then suddenly your face looks even wider, right? That fake, big, cheesy grin, yeah, that never looks pretty. But if you bring the face down and give it a more subtle grin, then suddenly your face is a lot more slender as well. Uh, the fake smile thing is the worst. We want to look natural in our photographs and sometimes the best thing to do is just start laughing. And if you're laughing with girls, you know, say a funny word and get everybody to laugh and then take a bunch of photos or whoever's taking the picture, have them hit it about 10 times. And there's something really pretty that happens from that contrived laugh and then everything settles in. And before you know it, you've got genuine smiles on everybody and it creates such a pretty picture. Um, lips close or smiling with a grin. That's another thing to mix it up. Not every photograph has to have you smiling like this. Sometimes it's just interesting to do the grin smile. And then sometimes it's just interesting to relax your face, part your lips ever so slightly, and just hold that for a natural, candid moment. Play around with facial expressions. I think too often that one, two, three cheese just makes for a very unnatural type of a picture. So grins are great. Um, cheating your head if you're posing with people and it's a headshot, tipping your head towards somebody acknowledges their presence in the photo. It acknowledges the relationship and the connection between you and that person. And I find that it makes it more endearing than two heads straight on. But Instead, two heads that are now tipped toward each other, chin down a little bit, and then making eye contact toward the camera shows the relationship, and that's key in what you're trying to capture. Uh, okay, so now we're going to talk about, and that was all types of photographs. Now let's move on to the selfie and the cell phone camera. There are some serious tricks of the trade here. And once you figure these out, I'm serious, you will be happy with your photographs from now until eternity. Number one, 
the selfie. What you need to do is play around with your camera. Hold on, I'm going to grab mine. Okay, so once you have your camera, now is your chance to play around. And the best way to do this with a cell phone camera, I'm, I'm sure you know at this point, but in case you don't, on the left-hand side, your volume controls, the bottom control also takes a photo. So when you swip it uh, switch it around to selfie mode and you see yourself, what you do at this point is now start playing around with your sides. So for instance, if I'm getting the left side of my face, I'm going to hold my phone in my left hand. I'm going to use my index finger on this bottom button and I'm going to use it to fire away. So when you do selfies, you always want to hold your phone above your head. It's a nicer angle shooting down on a woman and it also helps to create better lines in the face. And so you just take it and you press it down and you can play around now with your smiles. You can do a big smile, you can do your grin, and you can start to see what looks good. At the same time, you can start moving your camera around to see how you look at different angles. Reverse your hand and now bring it over to the other side and you get to decide what side of your face you prefer. I tend to shoot myself from my left side and that's because of the way my hair parts. I've got it on this side so you see more of my face in this angle versus this angle. So I usually don't shoot so much from this angle because my my face is covered but sometimes that can be a really dramatic look and especially with the way the light hits and I may go that way but again when it comes to selfies start shooting and then measuring and figuring out okay that's my best angle and so that way when you're with a group of people and it's selfie time you know exactly where to come in how to position yourself and what's going to be your best angle so that covers your face in group shots especially with selfies I love everybody interacting and not necessarily looking so much at the camera so if you are taking photos now in a group setting I think it is so cool to just start talking or have somebody say something or have someone say something funny and then get everybody to respond to it or get everybody to laugh at the same time there is nothing more precious in my opinion than those candid photos that really capture a memory and a moment and then every time you see that photo you think about that moment you think about what that person said or whatever triggered that moment and it's just going to have a very special place in your heart last but not least well actually two things um, when taking a photo with a cell phone and if the person if you hand your phone to somebody and say can you take our photo a couple of rules ask them to hit to hold the phone completely parallel because if it tips this way or this way it's going to create distortion so you want the phone to be held perfectly parallel now a lot of women choose to be photographed from above shot down on and it's slenderizing but what that does also is it really makes the head in focus and everything else is very very small what i find and this may be shocking but if you photograph from let's say hip level suddenly legs look elongated and you've got legs for days being photographed down at hip level so when you hand somebody your camera and say can you grab a picture of us don't be afraid to say would you mind taking a series of photos starting from high and working your way down. And this way, A, you're covered in all of the different possibilities of height and how that's going to look. Also, when you're photographed in a group, not everybody's going to have their eyes open, their game face on. And so this way, you're giving everybody a chance to really look their best. And I always ask, please shoot mul multiple photos because you never know. It's sometimes it's one out of 10 where you got your money shot. So if someone just shoots it once, you know, the odds are really against you for you looking your best and also everybody else in that photo looking their best. So again, there are so many wonderful tips and tricks, but, but most importantly is figuring out how to do all of this and to make it seem natural and effortless. And it just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of practice. When being photographed with family members or those you love, what makes them so beautiful is capturing the emotion. So even though you're thinking about angles and body pose and all of that, the most important thing to capture is the love 
between two people. And so come in close. That close physical contact in a photo, heads near each other, arms around each other. That intimacy is what makes for such a beautiful moment. And to me, that supersedes anything else that I've just told you. But I do truly believe that you can capture intimacy and relationship and still know your best side, still know how to position your head, and still make it a magical candid shot. So I hope these little tricks have been helpful for you as we head into photograph season. Click, click, click. Lots of pictures are going to be taken this holiday. Um, I, I want you to feel great about them. I want you to say, wow, look at all the winners we have in this lot. And Which one are we going to blow up and put up on the wall or send to grandma? Um, please let me know how it works for you. I really want your feedback on this video. Let me know what else you would like to see from me. Again, I'm trying to be creative here in, in the types of things that I present. And and we also have Christmas coming up, so that means a giveaway is on the horizon as well. So many things to look forward to. I love this season. I love you. Go out, be bold, and be blessed, and I'll see you next week. Bye.